What's up guys, Black Hole Zero, and welcome back to another video, and today we're back on ProSacma.2020 for yet another video, and we are back for the final episode of the Pink Attacker, our 2014 Giro d'Italia save uh, on PCM 2020, as I said, with Europe Car, and mainly with Pierre Roland, the man who keeps on attacking, and although he hasn't really attacked this year uh, in, in this save, we've got four more stages, I believe three of them are worthy of an attack, we will see if we can move three mountain stages coming up in this episode, I believe. Um, the first one, Belluno Rifugio Panarotta uh, with the climb of, of Valsugana. I mean, be prepared for my best Italian accent. Um, but 17 kilometers, an average of 7.6. Not an easy stage, followed by Bassano del Grappa, Shima Grappa, a 26 kilometer mountain time trial. You know I love these, uh, but I also know that I usually love them when my rider is good in time trial, which is not exactly the case of Pierre Roland. Uh, then, the queen stage of this Giro, Maniago Monte Zoncolan. It's the, it's the Zoncolan, it's the climb you either hate it or you love it. On a day, I'm gonna love it, well, on another day, I'm gonna hate it, so you never really know. And finally, uh, there'll be a sprint stage between Gemona and Trieste. We'll try and keep the um, Maria Aru Azura, sorry, for, um, for Tony Urel. But yeah, enough chit chat. Also, high webcam. Um, and let's just get on with it. We're third in the GC. Can we aim any higher? I don't know, but I'm going to try my fucking best. It's a plus three for Pierre Roland. Come on. It's a plus four for Sikar as well. Come on. All right. All right. I mean, I have very little faith in my, uh, my abilities on PCM right now. Um, but I'm, I have to try something with Pierre. Like, he, that, that's what he would have wanted, realistically. It's what he would have wanted. All right, we're um, in the Paso San Pellegrino, the breakaway, seven and a half minutes in the lead. Uh, we're starting to see some riders in the peloton moving up, just like little bubbles that you could see in some sparkling water of the brand San Pellegrino. I just wanted to slap that in. Uh, also, if you're drinking sparkling water, then just know that you are part of the problem as to why the world has gone to shit. I'm sorry, but like mineral water, yeah, then any other kind of water, then like very much below the surface. Like you can't even see in the camera anymore, but it's like, I'm like, it's down, basically the floor, sparkling water. I'm sorry, but I guess we'll take a quick look at the breakaway nonetheless, even if you're drinking sparkling water. I mean, I don't judge, <laughs> even if I clearly do. We've got Kizalowski for Trek Sigafredo for, no, Trek Factory Racing at the time, I think. Diego Rosa for Androni, Samuel Sanchez, my bad. Steve Morabito, uh, the trials for BMC. You've got Peter Venning for Orica Green Edge. You've got Yele Vanandat, the um, Chiclem New Jersey of... Um, no, it's not Chiclem, no, it's Azura, my bad. He's got the Azura. Tony Urel has the Chiclem. Also, my riders are losing positions, and I don't like it. Okay, nice. Uh, let me just go back to the break. As I was saying, Vanandat uh, for Lotto Bellisol. You've got Matteo Rabotini for Venizabu. Pretty sure he got doped. Uh, Diego Lissi and Prigemislav Nimiec for Lamprey. Davide Villela for Cannondale. Eduardo Zardini for Bargiani. And finally, Maxime Bouet for Aja de Zerla Mondial. Five kilometers onto the summit of the first climb of the day. Um, yeah, breakaway for now. Safe peloton. Doesn't really give a shit about. And I'm not going to complain. There's been a crash in the peloton. I was taking a look at uh, Tony Urel. Bjorn Turo has crashed with Nathan Haas. The two riders are back on the back, though. That's very good. Um, yeah, a couple of, uh, of riders dropped. I'm going to be honest, I didn't really give a shit about Bjorn Turo or Tony Urel or Angelo Tulek, uh, which is why they dropped. Urel is waiting, actually, for, uh, for Angelo so that I can have a teammate with me uh, and don't lose too much energy with uh, my, uh, my sprinter. Right, when the uh, Paso del Redebus, uh, 444 is the gap for the breakaway. Peloton-wise, um, we're doing well. We're doing well. We're at the front of it, uh, but we're not pacing. Pierre is completely... Well, he's nearly full of energy, which is absolutely perfect. Uh, Omega has made a little acceleration. Let's try to uh, slowly but surely increase our rhythm. Make sure that David Malacarne... That's not Malacarne. That's Bjorn Turo. Make sure that Malacarne is going to bridge the gap. He isn't. All right. Uh, well, Rigo Uran is gone. Interesting. Didn't see that coming. We're on the uh, transition portion between uh, the penultimate and the final climb, um, and the peloton is going to bridge the group Rigo Uran and Joaquin Rodriguez. Um, how did Romain Sicard get dropped in? 
Romain. Fuck's sake. He's actually useless. Like, he actually doesn't serve a single purpose. I've got Malacarne on protection um, for man like Pierre Roland. We're going to get water for the final time today. And prepare ourselves for a tough finish, I'd say. And we've started the final climb of this stage number 18 of the Giro Italia first stage of the episode. Um, all right. All right, all right. Gap is two minutes with the breakaway. Astana is pacing. I'm guessing Fabio Aru is on a very, very good day. Uh, where's my boy Pierre? Slightly down, but it's fine. It's fine. He's going to be able to make a little comeback. Should be able to um, rejoin the likes of Quintana, the likes of... Um, where's Uran? Uran is, is leading, basically, the Conan right now. Okay. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? 13 k to go. Are we going to catch the breakaway? It is likely that we do so. So we'll have uh, potentially a chance at getting a stage win today. Should we play our cards right? Uh, but yeah. Right now we're being blown by Yuki Arashiro. So my cards aren't being played at all. If anything, I've just like... I have one ace and an eight. Uh, and there's a potential for me to have like... Two pairs. But right now with the way I'm playing... Uh, I'm, I'm getting like... Um, I, I'm getting four in a row, but therefore not a flush. So I've kind of lost. Well, it's not I've kind of lost. Like, I'm losing. Rigo. Rigo is gone again. Rigo is gone again with Perito Rodriguez. All right. Scarponi is the one leading the peloton. Nero Quintana and Will. Pozovo, Kelman, Morabito. Where's Pierre? Pierre is in a decent position right next to Samuel Sanchez. We're going to get slightly dropped, though. Hopefully, we can make the cut. We should be able to do so. 6.5k till the line. Nero Quintana still leading the peloton. Actually, not still leading, just leading the peloton. He wasn't leading it before. He's trying to come back on Uran because Uran is the closest contender there is for the Madia Rossa of uh, Nairo Man. Nairo currently not in green, but in pink. And he's going to make the comeback. Uran seems out of energy. Is this... Is this where we choose to have an attack de Pierre Roland? Yes! Attack de Pierre Roland! Following Perito Rodriguez. Nero Quintana has followed. But Nero doesn't seem to be very good either. Mm hmm. I don't know. I don't know. For now, let's not care about Perito. Because let's be honest, I don't. I don't care about Perito. I only care about these three riders here. Aru, Quintana, Rigo, and those are the three riders that I care about. And we're going to go for another move. Just a tad. Just to see if we can push it. And we can't. We can't push it. Okay. Energy-wise, we're low. Quintana, Uran have been holding on to dear life in the wheel of Pierre Roland. Perito Rodriguez might be set to take a win to their Rifugio Panarota. 1.6k to go. 30 seconds in favor of the Spaniard. Is he going to win yet another Grand Tour stage? Most likely. Is he going to win a Grand Tour? No. 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 Let's just let's be real. No. Let's increase our rhythm with Pierre Roland. Uran, Quintana, Aru have probably recovered whilst uh, staying in my wheel. 600 meters to go. We're going to go 99 right now. Pierre Roland against Perito Rodriguez and Nero Quintana have launched slightly too early. The win is going to be for Perito ahead of Nero, man. Pierre Roland in the third, but we dropped Uran and we've dropped Fabio Aru. That is big. That is big. Nero Quintana might have just sealed the Giro d'Italia, but we may have a hope. Of coming back second. I think my uh, my second attack might have been the reason as to why I lost today. Perito wins though. He was by far the strongest in my opinion. Nero Quintana comes in second place. Tactical masterclass from the young Colombian. But we do put 47 seconds on Uran and Aru. Meaning that with the bonus seconds. We take back 53 seconds on Rigo. Meaning that we are now 17 seconds behind the Colombian leader from Omega Pharma Quick Step. Can we do anything to try and come back on Rigo. I think so. Can we come back on Nero Quintana? I'm not that confident. But up next, we have a stage that could change everything. Bassano del Grappa, Shima Grappa, 30 kilometers, basically. Well, I mean, 27. And 19 kilometers of pure hell. Yeah. I could lose the Giro here. All right, we've well and truly uh, started this time trial. Now uh, we've only got two riders left to go in Davide Malacarne and Pierre Roland. I haven't spoiled myself once again. 
I don't know the, um, the fitness of there. I'm just hoping it's a good day. Igor Hansen just took the lead in Shimagrapa. I mean, the gaps are somewhat massive, right? Angelo Tulek is 21 minutes down, and I know he's not last. So that's extremely surprising. Um, I feel like I kind of found the tactic I need to go for. Um, the, the issue with a team like this is that you have so little um, talented riders. I mean, that's, uh, that's a criminal uh, But there's so little, like, um, complete riders, and especially with this one where there's literally no one able to go on a time trial, it's very hard to, like, gauge basically what you have to do and try to find a model or a pattern um, in, like, how to do well. So I'm going to base myself on what I did with Roman Sicard. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If it does, it does. Um, realistically, what I'm hoping for is to finish. Like, if I can be within 30 seconds of Rigo Uran, comes the end of the stage, I'll take it. And the top 10 has started. Is Alex Sanjanez, P10, P9, Maxime Montfort, 11 minutes down. P8, 852 down. Dominique Peu de Vivre, who's having a bit of a stinker, I can't lie. In the seventh position, we have KD Levens, the former Malia Rossa, winner of the G No, not winner of the Giro, sorry. But Malia Rossa on the Giro, winner of the Tour de France. Number six, Perito Rodriguez. Is he going to lose a heap of time today? Yes. Number five, Rafa Maika, the uh, Polish rider who was fighting for, for white jersey and now he's now five minutes down. Fabio Aru, who potentially lost a lot yesterday by getting dropped with Uran. He's 2.52 down. And Pierre, 69 time trial, 81 mountain. I guess he'll do. I mean, that's, it's not like I, I can choose that otherwise. I can't slap myself a plus five. Because um, if, I, if I could, <laughs> I'm not saying I would have a plus five right now. But <laughs> you know. Uh, second place, we've got Uran, 144 down and leading the Giro d'Italia with uh, a time of 74 hours, 51 seconds and 21 minutes. And we've got Nero Quintana. Nero, man, starting his effort, 27 kilometers for the Colombian. What can he do today? Can he carry on and keep this Maria Rosa? I don't see who can take it from him. Maybe Uran can get close, but I don't think Nero is losing the jersey today. First intermediate, Uran 31 seconds down, Quintana 37, Roland 54. That's normal. I wanted to go easy on the flat and accelerate in the climb. Second intermediate coming up. Come on, Pierre. What has he done? Has he managed to... Uh, Clo himself a little gap, 147 on Pu... Hmm. <laughs> ah bon. All right then. Why not? Uran, two minutes down. What the fuck is going on? Uran is currently losing time to me. Quintana, 47 seconds down. Rigo is dying in this um, end of the Giro d'Italia. Okay. But Quintana is about to overtake Rigoberto Uran, but Joaquin Rodriguez is about to win a time trial. What the fuck is this? Perito just lapsed one and a half minutes on Genies. Not convinced. Pierre Roland is about to catch Fabio Aru, who himself is catching Rafa Maica. We are safe for a podium on this Giro d'Italia. Come on. Pierre is going to accelerate. Push it to the line, brother. Come on. Pierre Roland is not going to be a win. It's going to be a podium, I think. 138 down. All right, we are... We're, we're going to be like fourth place, I'd say, I think. Alex Andrines will catch second place today. Unless Quintana. Quintana might catch second place, to be fair. Nero across the line. He's going to carry on being in pink. Across the line, 116. He gets 22 seconds on me. But Rigo Uran loses 346. He lost 2 minutes and 8 seconds today. On the boy, Pierre Roland. Nero, Quintana second. Joaquim Rodriguez, 117 ahead of Nero. What in the world? That's back-to-back -back wins for Purito, meaning that GC-wise, Nero is 2.23 ahead of Roland, 4.14 on Uran, 5.01 on Aru, and 5.20 on Purito. Can Purito close one more minute on Rigo Uran on the mountains on Koran? Is the question on everybody's lips. And uh, the answer is coming in the next, like, I don't know, 10 to 11 minutes, I'd say. It's a plus four. It's a plus four for Pierre Roland on this final day of the Giro d'Italia. Well, final day. Final stage where you can have gaps. Uh, speaking of gaps, we've got a break already. Juliana Redondo, Yelevan and that, Tony Urel. I'm not gonna lie, yeah. if you had told me at the start of this playthrough that I would leave the Giro with a distinctive jersey, I probably would have said the white jersey before saying the points jersey. And that's 
without a single rider except Angelo Tulik being able to compete for set classification. Hell, I think I have more chance to winning the white jersey with Pierre Roland than winning the points with Tony Urel at the start of this video, or at the start of this series. Uh, so yeah, masterclass by Tony Urel, as per usual, big job. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a, a masterclass coming later as well with this man right here. Plus four. I mean, secondaries were good. Mountain, we've got 82. I'm just hoping that we can have some teammates making the um, Paso del Pura and the Sela Razzo. That's all I want. If I can have that, I think we have a chance. All right, we're going to get the points with Tony Urel. Uh, I've got Malacarne on water duty in the peloton. I don't remember what my lead is on uh, Nasser Boigny, who I believe is still my runner-up. Could be Luka Mesgec. I think, I know at one point it was Mesgec. I think we're still on, uh, on Nasser Boigny duty right now. Let's take a look. Um, Tony needs to take first. He will do so successfully. What does that mean points-wise? We have Pierre Roland in second place. Uh, Mesgec 131, 189, that means the cap is 58. Mathematically, we're not safe. But there's 62 points left, and he needs 58 to win with all Luka Mesgec. I just need to get 5 points, and I'm safe. I think the jersey will be ours. We've started the first climb of the day. The Paso del Pura. And it is the Katusha team of Purito Rodriguez, strong of two back-to-back -back wins on this Giorita line, including a time trial that uh, leads the group right now. Here's Maxim Belkov, followed by Luca Paolini. Omega Pharma Quickstep is also here for this man right here, Nico, uh, Nico? Rigoberto Uran, sorry. Um, my, my, uh, come on, Roman Sicard, I swear to God, you've got 71 Mountain. If you're not making this, then, then, then you're a dickhead. Maxime Ederel, if you aren't making the, like, the two summits with Pierre Roland, I'm stripping you down from your win on this Euro. I may not have an idea as to how I'm going to do it, but to be fair, episode 3 hasn't been uploaded yet, so I can literally remove that stage from airing, and you'll have no wins, you'll have no proof that you've won a Euro stage. So, for the love of God, make it. Roman. That also applies to you. You may have not won anything recently, but still, I'm not gonna have a consecutive L. Right. I kinda hate Katusha because as soon as I think they finished working, they reaccelerate. So that's not exactly enjoyable for, uh, for anyone, like even me, but mainly for my riders because. They don't have the, the best of legs, if I'm being honest right now, apart from, uh, from Pierre. Maxime de Reldo, Frank Soldon, he cares about that Jorin, he really does. But Perito, lad, uh, I've, I've carried you to like a Grand Tour win and World Championship. So for the love of God, please do not be a dickhead. Stop attacking me. Thank you. Crash an A16, Edvald Boasnagen has um, finished in the mud. Obviously, uh, we, we, we wish him uh, a decent comeback and uh, well, better days for uh, the upcoming stages, mainly the next one, because, I mean, there's only one more stage, I guess. Um, 50 riders in the peloton. We've started the Serra Razzo, 13 kilometers, an average rate of 6%. Not the toughest of climbs, but following the uh, Pass del Pura, it definitely will be felt in the legs of some of the guys. Uh, this time, it's Omega Pharma pacing. They've taken uh, the relay after Alberto Losada. And after Katusha in general. I don't know if like um, Perito is going to do what I used to do with him. Which is just attack as soon as you've got no teammates. If he does. Then, then expect a Perito attack. In like the final 2k of this climb. Perito did not attack. Okay. Maxime Derel is slightly behind. He's uh, alongside Steven Kroveik. Mate Steven. Realistically. Pace with me yeah. Thank you. Well we won't have a teammate. As we'll start the mountain zone colon. We're going to come back on a uh, Dominique Pozzovivo, which is nice, right? It's, it's all fun and games until you start the almighty Monte Zoncolan. And it is Hubert Dupont pacing? Dominique, are you good? I wanted to come back with Medirel, but I've never been able to do so. So maximum you can just like, just rest in it. Okay. Let's maintain a, a 69 rhythm right now. 
Danny Moreno taking the helm of the group. How long can Danny Moreno pace? For how long can he um, prevent Burrito from attacking? From how long can he just maintain this rhythm as we're now on the tough portions of the Zonkaran? Um, the tough portion, yeah, it is one tough portion. Lasting about five kilometers, let's be honest. Right, we're passing 75. Nero Quintana in my wheel, his car pony. Uh, where's Rigo? Rigo is a tad behind, but shouldn't be too much of an issue. Pozzo Evo seems good, you know. Pozzo had attacked on the uh, Sela Razzo and uh, got caught up before the summit, uh, the, the bottom of the Zonkolan, sorry. So maybe, just maybe, Pozzo is gonna try something. The young Italian, well, young Italian, sorry, the small Italian. That was very patronizing. Uh, but we'll see. 6.4k. Uh, Let's take the lead right now of this peloton. We're going to come back on Dan Martin and Franco Pellizzotti. Didn't even know they were in the breakaway, if I'm going to be honest. Six kilometers to go. Attack. Attack de Pierre Roland. Attack de Pierre Roland. Attack de Pierre Roland. It's a good move. It's a very cutthroat move by Pierre Roland in this Monte Zoncolan. Nero Quintana sadly follows. Arsenal really wanted him not to do that. Okay, it's fine. We, 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 we're still living. Up front, we've got uh, Robert Kizalowski and Nicholas Roche. We're going to recover energy by uh, just staying alongside um, Cameron Meyer and Mikel Landa. All of the riders that are attacked are going to come back at me here. That is perfect. I do not care about it. We're going to use our gel very soon. And as soon as this bitch gets activated, we'll attack again. There goes, there goes Pierre Roland. Attack de Pierre Roland. There goes Pierre Roland. We're going to reach the first group. Okay. 4K to go now. Quintana has bridged us as well. We've made a little gap here, thanks to Robert Kizelowski. Uh Okay, no, Quintana's strong. Quintana is strong. N Nero definitely has the legs. We have the 1-2 of the Giro d'Italia right here, ladies and gentlemen. We have our 1-2. Nero, Quintana ahead of Pierre Roland, even though on, on the road the situation is somewhat different. I don't see how I'm going to be able to drop the Colombian. Uh, I'm going to keep pacing until the end because I feel like if I let him pace, I can't make him lose energy, if that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, I, I guess my, my rhythm will be uh, well key. Now look at this, 15% gradient. The peloton is already far behind. Perito Rodriguez, who had seemed strong, he's made the entire team work today. Uh, he's now 144 down. But Nero Quintana still in my wheel with 1.7 kilometers left in this Giro d'Italia. Is he going to nab the win as well from me? If he does, he's a dickhead. Let's be honest. If he does, he's a dickhead. He won't. He won't. He won't. Nero Quintana collapses. Nero Quintana cannot follow Pierre Roland. It's not going to be the Maria Rossa for our boy, but it is nonetheless going to be a last attack by Pierre Roland, who wins at the Monte Zoncolan ahead of Nairo Quintana. I forgot a second. I think it's Nairo Alexander Quintana Rojas. Pierre Roland wins on the Monte Zoncolan and wraps up a very, very good Tour de France. Tour de France? Very good hero for the Team Europe car. Nairo Quintana comes in second place and seals the GC. Third position will be for, and that's crucial actually for the, um, the GC. Perito, Perito holds on to third place. Aru, Pozzo, Uran. Can Uran hold on to his podium position compared to Perito? I don't know. I'm not sure. Kizelovsky, Nicholas Roche, very solid climb from the two breakaways. K11, Scarponi, Cameron Meyer, Mikel Landa. Is there a big loser today? I'm not seeing Alexandre Nez, who has had a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal time trial, sorry. Here is Alexandre Nez. I think he's the last member of the top 10 uh, that's going to cross the line, if I'm correct. Actually, no, he's Rafa Maika. He's Rafa Maika. But then, that is it for this Monte Zoncolan. That is it for this Giro d'Italia. We have one more stage. You can see all the riders spread on this um, incredible climb. But yeah. We have a win with Pierre Roland. Can't really complain now, can I? <sighs> I mean... If I wanted to win, he would have had to finish with Origi Gessenari. I just don't think he was there yet. Maybe one more mountain stage and I had him. But Pierre Roland wins the Giro d'Italia. Uh, no, he doesn't. Pierre Roland wins the Monte Zoncolan. It's the best stage you can win on the Giro. 
Nero Quintana is gonna take lead. Fabio Aru jumps. Oh god! There's 15 seconds between Aru, Uran, and Rodriguez for P5. Perito, despite being an absolute smokes that this past week, hasn't been able to overtake Aru, but Uran lost the position to, to Uran. L. Big L. Jelvan Adat takes second place. Sorry, what am I on about? Jelvan Adat takes the mountain jersey. Thank you. The Maglia Azura goes to the Belgian ahead of Perito and Nero Quintana. Arredondo, who had like a stunning lead at one point, is completely choking. Uh, Tony Murel potentially has won it yet. I mean, mathematically not, but if I manage to lose the points classification tomorrow, my channel gets closed, right? And I'm giving all my subscribers to Minimina. Minimina. Man like Minimina, yeah. He needs 10 million. There's 2,000 of us. Come on. <laughs> Nero Quintana wins the best classification for the young riders. I forgot that at this point he was still young. And the best team, Astana. I mean, it's in, in France, we would say it's a victoire de prestige. It's a prestigious victory. And it is. I mean, when you think of Giro, m most of the time, you're going to think of like the Stelvio and the Monte Zoncolan. Pierre Roland has now written his name on the Zoncolan. He previously wrote his name on the Alpe d'Huez. Uh, I mean, I don't think he's going he's gonna to write his name on the slopes of the Angliru in real life. If he does, something has gone massively wrong or just it's, it's a friendly between like Vital Concept and Burgos Behace and Pierre Roland won the 1v1 against Angel Madraza. I don't know. Final stage of this Giro d'Italia between uh, Gemona and Trieste. We have 168 kilometers to savor this uh, this series i guess um it most likely is the final mini series there is on pcm 2020 um however as soon as we'll have um like vintage databases i guess for pcm 2021 uh those series will be make a comeback but there is i have one series planned already for 2021 and that's it because like the game is around the corner the game comes out in less than a month uh, at the time I'm recording. By the time this gets uploaded, which is in a week, uh, there'll be like three and a half weeks until release. So, like, not even, not even three and a half. Like, three weeks until release. So, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Uh, I'll have a poll in my, on my channel very soon, uh, like midway through the zero, probably like first rest day, whether um, you guys want me to do an actual save or a custom career one. Um, and if it's a real one, then which team, all of that. Uh, I'll also have a pro cyclist on the side, this time with me, not a real rider. I'll have a pro cyclist with me, um, and I'll try to uh, carry on as a, like a, a red thread or a red needle throughout the entire season, uh, because I feel like pro cyclists with, with real riders, they're fun, but you can't really make them a long time thing unless you go for someone very young, but then again, usually progress quite quite rapidly on um, on pro cyclist so we'll see um but back to the stage though we have a two-man breakaway at the front martin Tialingi and johnny hogeland this really feels like the start of the dutch championships uh but like the very flat one between i don't know utrecht and i don't know utrecht yeah just a, just a lap around utrecht or rotterdam at least i know it's flat um there's a km coming up is johnny hogeland gonna fight for it let's take a look Johnny Ogolon, oops, she's my bad. Uh, no, mate, this price money. Go get your bag. You can get $200 if you, or 200, like, um, Swiss francs. No? L, big L for Johnny Ogolon. We've entered the final circuit around Trieste. Uh, I'll be honest, it's a shame that there's no wind. Because this could have been very fun. I mean, very fun. Zander Arme just crashed, which is an L for Lotto Bellisol. Uh, or Lotto Sudan. No, I think it was originally Lotto Belisa at the time. Uh, and we've just gone under the 50 kilometer threshold. <sighs> All right, we're wrapping up the Giro in less than 50k. About one and a half hour of racing. Can we wrap it up with a good sprint? I'm not seeing a win. I'm seeing a good sprint. So top five finish. And um, I think my day would be made. 14k to go. 
All right, we we'll cover live those final kilometers. You may be wondering why the fuck do I have a train for Tony Urel and why do I have a train for Bjorn Turo? I'm glad you asked. Uh, it's not a train for Bjorn Turo. Because look, I know in the first episode I might have disappointed. Crash Luca Mesget! The script! The script! Luca Mesget, the only rider able to compete for the point classification, has yeeted himself on the ground. What an L! What an L. But as I was saying, I know I disappointed with the lax, uh, the, the lax, sorry, of Attack de Pierre Roland. I'm going to give you a final Attack de Pierre Roland. It will be for the sprint. Pierre Roland will have one more shot at taking a stage win on the Euro d'Italia. And it will be in a sprint stage between somewhere and Trieste, like I think it was Gemona. Do I think I'm going to win? No, 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 no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Habba, Habba, jeez, German. Uh, but a man can try. Uh, that, that's been my motto during this entire Giro. It's like, a man can try. Bjorn Tiro accelerates. Withdra withdraw from Luke Mesgetch. What a nail. Poor kid. Attack de Pierre Roland. Attack de Pierre Roland. Attack de Pierre Roland. Definitely the strongest of all his attacks. To be fair, it's not bad. He's actually managed to get a gap with the Peloton. It's not going to do him any favor. But it's nice. Cool. There's, uh, there's, there's ambition. I've completely fucked up my sprint though because of that, haven't I? Yeah. Yeah, good. Nice. Stonks. Uh, well, Yuki Arashiro, yeah? You know when I said I wanted a good sprint? <laughs> oh, Yuki are definitely at the legs for a podium. Yuki is going to get a podium. I should have won this. I had so much energy. Nasser Boni takes the job ahead of Bernard Heisel, Yuki Arashiro, Sacha Modelo, David Malacarne, Tony Urel, Ben Swift, Mourinho Fischer, Angelo Tulik, and Laurent Pichon, Pierre Roland in 12th place, Luke Mesgetch in the bin. Alright, Nasser Boni did not push his way through the field, nor did he punch someone to get the win today. Congratulations, he wins the sprint ahead of Bernard Eisel and Yukia Arashiro. I'm not gonna lie, I think that's a podium that's not even worthy of the Etoile de Bessege. So to have that on the final set of the Grand Tour, not, not convinced. I've, I've literally skipped the pink jersey! What is wrong with me? For fuck's sake. Geneva Landet is in blue. Woohoo! Tony Urel wins the jersey of the points, the Ciclamino uh, jersey, the Malia Ciclamino. How ah, the fuck has he done that then? 207 points ahead of 175 for Nasser Boni and 154 for Pierre Roland. Big ups. Arashiro, 87. I win the team points classification. It's not a thing, but in my head it could be. Allow it. Like, who, what are you judging? I can see you. I can see you judging me. And I don't like that. I think that's Nairo Quintana, yeah? Yeah, it is. Nairo Quintana wins the points. The mount, the... Pff, wins the young rider classification. Sorry, I'm an absolute shambles. Ahead of Aru and Rafa Maiga. Uh, oddly enough, no rider from my team. Uh, we are in ninth place. Come on. We've only, we've only lost 48 minutes on Astana. I'm going to guess that 40 of those minutes actually come from the time trial in the mount stage. Because, I mean... I did lose half an hour with Angelo Tudic. Ah, stinker, stinker. Right, that's how we saw you. Clap, clap, clap. Nice one. Nice. Uh, but this is where, like, this is this Giro. Nero Quintana wins the 2014 Giro d'Italia ahead of Pierre Roland, Aru, Uran, and Purito. Just like in real life, we have the Colombian on the first step. Uh, I believe the rest of the podium was Uran in second, then Aru. Pierre Roland was in fourth place, that was for sure. So we have an improvement on the Frenchman. Um, I also checked just for like knowledge and that uh, the, um, the time it took for Nero Quintana to do the Giro in 2014. Uh, he finished it in 88 hours, so four hours more than this one. Although there was some abysmal weather conditions back in the days. I do remember very vividly the stage where Quintana actually won the Giro, where basically the stage was neutralized, but he didn't really give a shit about it uh, and won. Tiro in second, Aru Uran Purito, uh, who was very strong during this year, I believe, like two or three race wins for him. Pozzo, Kate Elevens, Rafa Maika, Maximo Far Alexandrinez, who maintains a top 10 position uh, after yesterday's emoluments on, um, on the Don Colan. But yeah, that's going to be it for this year. There's one, ch actually, I need to check one stage. Uh, was it Monte Cassino? Nope. Uh, it was this one. I lost 122 on Quintana on the stage of Monte Copiolo, where I was the strongest, but I was badly positioned. Well, I got blocked. If I don't lose that minute 22 and I finish with Uran, 
I still lose. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. And thanks for watching this video, but not only this video, but also the series, The Pink Attacker comes to an end. Four episodes, just like TJ in yellow, just like the last shot. Um, and yeah, I do hope you've enjoyed it. It was very fun recording these. Um, not only this one, but the two other mini series. As I said, we're coming to an end of PCM 2020. Uh, so this won't be a thing before the next game and before a couple of like weeks slash months before uh, an, um, a vintage DB gets released. I do hope you've enjoyed this. Um, it was an absolute blast doing it. And um, yeah, if you're new to the channel and want to see more of my content, please feel free to subscribe. As I'm saying this, we're still uh, getting close to 2000. I'm hoping that the Jira might have helped um, propelling us over that, um, that barrier of the 2000. But if it hasn't, then please do subscribe. 53% of you aren't subscribed to my channel. And I mean, it's free. Subscribe if you don't like my content and you can unsubscribe. Uh, but then again, I will find you and I will uh, make you resubscribe by force. Um, oh yeah, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below. If there's anything you want to say in the comments, please feel free to. If you want to say attack the Pierre Roland in the comments, feel free to do so. And I will see you in the very near future. My name is Guillaume. I have been Black Core. Have an absolute blast. And goodbye. Pass me the funk, get your funk on, girl, and don't you ever.